Okay, this is major impromptu, big time. I don't really know what I'm doing. I have to go on the SEC or Edgar website. Kind of figured, well, hey, might as well just take you guys along with me on the little journey trip because um, this is what you're going to have to do too if you want to know if your particular loan that you got Okay. Hey, Brian Parker. <laughs> if your particular so-called loan that they say that you signed for and they're trying to say that that's your debt validation, that is not showing your debt validation. That just so, so shows your signature that you signed when you thought you were getting a so-called loan. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We thought we were getting a loan. No. We weren't getting a loan. Okay, I'll tell you what's happening. This is what I'm finding out. Oh my gosh. They're all connected. Your houses, your cars, timeshares, anything that you do with a contract that you think that you're getting a loan. These long form contracts, when you fill them out, when they go down to here, this is the paper. This is the money right here. This is what they sell, I think, to the SEC. Sell it on the NASDAQ. I don't know what they call all that stuff. The trading, trading men's souls for money thing. So, there's so many things going in my mind right now. Yes, your signature is on there. Yes, it keeps going. Because you think that you are buying something. Uh, what? What you think you're doing, you go in there thinking that you're buying something and you're not buying anything. Hang on, I gotta let my dog in. I just heard her. She's so cute. Yes. It's a little bit messy in here, but that's okay. Come on. You wanna go somewhere? I know. Come on in for a little bit. It's too windy out there right now. We'll come, we'll do something in a, in a little bit. Play with your cute little toys. Play with your little toys for right now. Pretend like you're eating, you know, your prey. One time she was eating a, she was eating a baby crow and I didn't know. I didn't know what she was doing, but she killed a baby crow in the bushes. And then she ate it all the way down to the feathers almost. Gross. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. So, oh, we got to go on the sec. So let's try this thing. All right. I was thinking, is that a gray hair? No. My outfit. <laughs> All right, let me see. Share the screen. Okay. I don't really have anything up here. What are we doing? Hey, what's a whiteboard? What's a whiteboard doing? Hey, whiteboard. What does this do? Format. Damn. What? Oh, looky here. I can write stuff. I don't really know how to use this thing. This is going to be cool. Format. I don't know. No. What is this? Cool. No. Uh, eventually, I shall try that out. But what I wanted to do really is... Hang on a second. All right. All right. Hang on. I know I'm not sharing the screen. I got to go to the sec. And the one that says Edgar... All right. Let's see. I guess I can share the screen now. Uh, share screen. Yeah. We shall go to Google. Okay. Google. You are screen sharing. Okay. So, Edgar, sec.gov. We got to go here, okay? Why are we going here? 
because what we're going to do is look at the company, if you can remember it. Ah, what company are we looking at? You know what? I have a feeling, shoot, that it should be the name of the dealership. I don't know. Should it be the dealership or the bank? Well, sheesh, I have a feeling it was the dealership, so I don't know. Sheesh, I don't know. Well, because I've already done the inquiries to ask Wells Fargo. Did you guys do security? You go, no, we gave you guys a loan, or we gave you a loan. It, where'd the money come from? Can you give me a debt validation? Then they sent me this, which is the, you know, contract, the car dealership. Um, Latest filings. Well, geez, you know what? I'm thinking maybe, gee, I don't know. Oh my gosh. That's a big thing. It could be the place where you bought, or it could be the bank. This whole time I was going after the bank, but it could be the car dealership. Shoot. I guess I'll have to try the car dealership first. All right. So let me see. Company or fund name, ticker symbol, file number, state, country, or standard industrial classification. Search by that. Or, I don't know. Was well, sick. There's a sick, C-I-C. -C. That means something. A sick number. Certified. See how they, boy, hey, there's a phone number right there. For questions or inquiries, or request. Gee, maybe I should email or call them. I don't know. But look, you guys, there's an email. Certified at sec.gov or call. I could call them on the phone. I guess I'm going to try that. So I don't know. Hang on a second. What should I do? All right, hang on. I'm going to call that phone number. Hang on. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Okay. Oh my gosh. So when I got to the SEC website, I was like going, wait, who would have bundled up the loans? Wouldn't that be the car dealership? Or would it be the bank? Which is the one that I should check? The bank or the car dealership? You know, when you go to the SEC, you got to find out where's the bundle. I'm thinking it's the Kia dealer. So I called the Kia dealer. I have the guy on the recording. He's the finance guy. I'm, I talked to the finance guy at the Kia dealership. He let me know that my loan for my car was not with Wells Fargo Auto. He said, no, it was from Wachovia. And I remember in 2008, that's when I bought the car, that Wachovia, I believe, might have gotten taken by Wells Fargo. That's how these things are getting hidden. I don't know. I don't know exactly what's happening. So they go bankrupt. Then another bank takes them. All those loans. They assign, they reassign all the loans, the houses, the cars, all that stuff. The guy was asking me, why are you looking into the sack? Why are you looking into that? He goes, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. So he let me know. That's why Wells Fargo, when I tried to do the house, to ask them, did they take securities out on the loans? I said, no, we don't see anything in our records. But when I went on Treasury Direct, let me see if I can show you. Okay, hang on a second. Let me share this screen for a second. Gosh, there's so much I want to do. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me see. Okay, look. This is where I was going. Like, you got to find the company. 
and the ticker symbol or the key number, or the file number, state country, blah, blah, blah. So I was like going, well, which business am I going to look up? Because it's a company, right? Uh, oh, man. Okay, so let me just show you something. Let me see. Let me reduce this down. Where, oh, where do I have the Treasury Direct? Let me see. I might have put him under this. Let me see really quick. I don't know if I got it here. Let me see. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I don't know. I can't do all this stuff on here. It's just my stuff. So I that that I can't be doing that. Okay, wait. I'm <laughs> just saying. Ooh, Office of the President. They're oh, they're emailing me. I just gave them a notice to agent. Is notice to principal. Notice to principal. Notice to agent. You might be gone. Ah. We got your thing. We will get back to you. Okay, wait. All right, under the screenshots, that's what it would be under. Oh my gosh, I can't do this, you guys. Hang on a second. I just, <laughs> wait, just wait a minute. Just wait. Yeah, I found it. Here it is, watch, check this out. So see the last five of this, 5505? That is the contract number for this car. Yeah, my customer number or whatever. Then this right here is the VIN number. That right there is the VIN number. Yeah, that's the VIN number for this car right here. So this is where I found it. And I sent Wells Fargo thinking it was them. I said, look, there's bonds on here. Look at how much their value is. Like I, when was this? 2008, the issue date. And 2008. So... The next accrual, it's still going, September 22. And 1238, meaning the year 2038, it'll keep going. So look at the value, 5,960 at a 1.30% interest rate. Here's another. This is the VIN number. So this is the loan account number. This is the VIN number. I'm going to look at some more numbers to see if there's any more. Maybe there's even a contract number. There's a control number. I don't exactly know what that is. There's an ROS number. I don't know. Retail. Sale number. There's a stock number too. There's a lot of numbers on here. So that guy was trying to get me off of the, the trail. He says, no, we don't make securities on car contracts. But I was like, no, I think you do. He goes, like, I'm trying to help you out here. He goes, it wasn't with us. It was with Wachovia. <laughs> but I am going to look on the second. <laughs> look under, I don't know. Should I look under Kia too? But okay, so check out these numbers. That is the VIN number of the car. That is the loan number of the deal. This is the value of that. Not amazing. Pretty wild, huh? Pretty cool. All right, so let me see. Share my screen. We're going to have to go on the Edgar thing. Oh, boy. He was a nice guy. Sounded like he was Chinese. He was the um, 
what's it called? The finance person? Ah, that was the right person to talk to. Perfect. It's probably what people should be doing is just calling up the company, talking straight to the finance person, don't you think? Instead of going through some salesperson, you just go straight to the guy. So we have the latest filings. Nah, I don't want to know your latest. Let me see. I want to know the company or fund name. All right, let's just click on that and see what happens. Is anything happening? Yeah, something's happening. So you're going to have to have your paper with your numbers and the date. How to research public companies. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission welcomes your feedback. Nah, I don't have time for you. Um, how to research public companies. Form types. Review reference versions of Edgar forms filed by companies. Let's try that one. Although up there on the top, it says how to research public companies. You could do that too. Okay, so filed by, let me see what they reviewed. So you could do it. Oh, wow. This is going to be interesting. Wow. Broker, dealers. Um, gee, I don't know. Who would the broker dealers be? There's auditors, credit rating agencies. Hey. Edgar Filers, investors. Nah, we're not going to go with that. Public companies? No. Hmm. Let me just come in plus this and see if we can go bigger. No, no, no. Um, broker dealers, clearing agencies? I don't know. Municipal securities. This is how they're hiding. Sheesh. Broker dealers. Oh, look at that. Securities Act. Let me just do this. See if we can get this going bigger. Yeah, there you go. Take a look at this, peoples. Looky over here. So I can figure out how to use my own computer. <clears throat> it would be nice. Okay. Come on, come on. Where's that thing? There it is. I'm looking for the bar on the side so I can scroll this puppy down. All right, there it is. Gee whiz, gee whiz, come on. All right, whoa, look at all this interesting stuff here, you guys. Irrevocable appointment of agent for service of process, pleadings and other papers by non-resident, general partner or broker or dealer. Hmm. Customer relationship summary. Hey, look over here. Securities Exchange Act of 1934. Whoa, whoa. Look over here. Do you see how there, there's that date, 1934? Oh, the Securities Exchange Act, 1934, broker dealers. I think that man might have lied to me. He says, no, when you come in, you're just buying a car. It's just a contract. We're not doing any securities. I'm trying to help you out. I go, well, I, I'm on the SEC right now, and I just don't know if I should look up Kia or should I look up Wells Fargo? He goes, no, it's not with Wells Fargo. It's with Wachovia. <gasps> oh, my gosh. No wonder they are, went bankrupt because they did no-no's. <laughs> they did securities stuff. That is why they went under. They got busted. I'm pretty sure I'm putting it all together. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to look at this email from Wells Fargo. Shoot. I'm just trying to look to go any further here. So if you guys have time, look up all these kind of things and start reading this stuff. Notice a registration. Hey, what's that all about? 
as a broker dealer for the purpose of trading security futures products pursuant oh okay uniform request for broker dealer withdrawal customer customer relationship summary form customer custody custody for broker dealers this might be something you know to look into irrevocable appointment of agent uh, for service of process pleading is another favorite because this might help us with our other things like for him to tell me that my loan was not with wells fargo no wonder they'd be going we can't find it we don't see anything because it wasn't with them it was with wachovia Whoa. So it was Wachovia that probably did the 1099A and they got paid. It was Wachovia that probably did the securities. But I still don't know how to use the securities thing yet. But that's, I'm going to have to come up with my thing. Anyways, I gave those other people the notice like, ooh, they should be shaking in their boots. I can't wait to look at my email. I'm going to look at it right now because um, I, oh, he just received a letter. Okay. I got to stop for a second. Hang on a second. Music. Oh, okay. So, wow, that was wild. I just finished listening. I just finished listening to the recording that I just made of talking to the finance guy. Wow, so he just gave me a nice chunk of change right there. This is weird because Wells Fargo Auto sent me this contract. Personally, I didn't remember sending payments. Way back in 2008, I don't remember sending payments to Wells Fargo Auto. But now I'm remembering in 2008 that Wachovia uh, went bankrupt and then Wells Fargo overtook them. So that's probably why they were doing the auditing of those old loans that they acquired. Uh, um, I was just reading something. Yeah, I just printed out. And I'm going to read this. I'm going to try to read this. It's talking about securitization. And it says it's absolutely illegal. So I'm going to do another video on all of this. Yeah, it's 58 pages. But in here, it says that we're supposed to be notified whenever the uh, loan that we get gets sent to somebody else and they I don't remember I don't remember getting anything but this was a little while ago you know my head was spinning at that time so interesting antitrust the Clayton Act 15 USC 12 definitions antitrust laws an act to protect trade and commerce against unlawful restraints and monopolies. Hello. Approved July 2nd, 1890. Section 73 to 77. An act to reduce taxation to provide revenue for the government and for the purposes. Oh, wow. This is wild. I'm going to read this. I like this one part right here. This is funny. <laughs> this is so funny. So what? So something about it's important that those dollars not go to loans that should not have been sold to us in the first place. Throwing the blame for Freddie Mac's own scandalous racketeering behavior back at the banks. So being interpreted, what this woman was saying was this. We are covering ourselves with a mantle of rectitude by posing as protectors of the taxpayers' dollars in order to obfuscate, hide, blur, our own ongoing racketeering behavior, 
even as we prepare further fraudulent finance securitizations in violation of the rel relevant U.S. legislation. And we couldn't care less because we are owned by the government itself, which is up to its neck in violations. And that's what I'm noticing. When you go over your contracts or your deeds and you read the languages that are on there, it's a trust. Like I have all these letters came back. They came back because of the three cent stamp. Apparently, the post office doesn't know about those codes, 12 statute 71, 23, and 18 U.S.C., 1726, non-domestic, postage paid, without the U.S. Anyways, two of my letters did go through, but these other ones did not. Can't just put them all together because they're like, hey, red flag. Put them in different places, I guess, because uh, they don't know. Some places don't know. But I am looking at my grant deed right here for my timeshare. And it's interesting because on the top left, they will put your name the way it's supposed to be spelled, right? Oh, send all of the tax bills to this place and that address. And that's spelled right. Then when you get over to the grant deed portion, it says stuff like for valuable consideration, which that right there, that is trust language right there. And then when they grant to the all caps name and they put a title like husband and wife or tenants, joint tenants with right of survivorship, this is a doing business as name with some, you know, that right of survivorship. They make you think this is a timeshare deed. They make you think, oh, yeah, you're going to have the option of being able to gift it to your children and your grandchildren so they can have vacations for life. No, when you flip it around, it means that right of survivorship, what it means is that they can tax your children and your grandchildren and perpetuity forever. That's what you have to be careful with. Some of these right of survivorship thing, they switch it around. So then they say grantee, that you're the grantee of real property. Yeah. So you got to look at all your contracts that you signed. All contracts have been done securitized. That's why you have a high turnover when you had the first timeshare company. And then the second one came in and bought it. And then the third one automatic, automatically acquired it. It's because they're gone bankrupt because of the racketeering. It's a RICO violation under Title 18. I think it's 242, but... <sighs> okay. <clears throat> I do want to explore the Edgar thing. <coughs> but I'm going to have to do it on my own. It's going to just take me too long because I feel like I'm performing, you know? Hmm. I need that. What is this? Alkaline water? Vapor distilled water. Cool. Anywho, I'm kind of tired after finding out that revelation. That was amazing. And yeah, I did just check my email. It was an automatic thing that says, oh, the office of the president will be getting right back to you. And I'm wondering how easy it is for them that now that I've said, hey, I realize that it wasn't with Wells Fargo. It was Wachovia. They're going to be like, okay, wasn't our deal. Sorry, can't help you. But you know what? I did say notice to agent is notice to principal. And notice to principal is notice to agent. And this is the thing. If they've taken over and they've done the auditing and they hand, and hand me a check for five bucks from way back in 2008, then they can probably access <laughs> Wachovia's other stuff. Right? Okay. Well, I gotta take a drink. <clears throat> Oof. Man, this weather's dry. Very windy. Oh, and it's because of the chemtrails. When they're spraying that, it gets very windy and gets very dry. And then, I don't know, a day or two later, it gets collects water and it has rain. 
But anyways, I do want to look at this Edgar thing. But that was a cool revelation. That was so cool because I just sent an email saying, now that I'm aware that the car was through Wachovia, this is why the house, you could not find any of the stuff on Treasury Direct because that was through Wachovia as well. So now I'm thinking maybe I need to do the CFPB or the FTC. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, who's holding them accountable? When you go out of business, where do you go? When that corporation, Wachovia or World Savings or whoever it was, when they go out of business, who do you go to? I mean, I'm just thinking it's the FTC, but they're not in existence anymore. But I want my money back. <clears throat> Or my tax credits or whatever it is that we we're getting back. Because this is the thing. We thought we were getting a loan. We weren't getting loans. They were tapping into our credit. They were giving us our credit. Then they securitized. I don't know if that means they created a debt when they did that. Oh. But it's all book entry. So they didn't give us money. They gave us book entry. Meaning you write stuff down in a book. Negative, positive, asset, debit. <clears throat> it was a trust. It wasn't a purchase like we thought. We weren't doing commerce because, you know, actually we're not making profit. The reason this is what I'm getting at, we know that when you're buying a house or a timeshare or something that's going to double up in price or eventually go up. So they have us as if we're doing business, commerce, to make money. That's how they're doing it. With the cars, they depreciate. They don't seem to go up in value unless you restore it or whatever. But they have us even at that. I have a feeling that when they convert our names, <clears throat> where is that thing? When they convert our names, oh my gosh, it says Wachovia down here on the very back. <gasps> oh my gosh. And the very back bottom, it does say Wachovia. All this time, whoa, this is just so tricky. Why is it that Wells Fargo gave me this and they didn't say anything about Wachovia? Hmm? It's wild, man. This is wild. It's like they hide it. They're not telling us. That's wild. So how do we get an audit done? Obviously, I've been trying or attempting to audit. But, you know, I did go through the CFPB on the Wells Fargo for the house. They said, we didn't come up with anything. Then I tried, <clears throat> instead of going with CFPB, I just tried myself with the Wells Fargo auto. Like, we're not coming up with anything. We don't find anything. But it's because it was with Wachovia. Boop, way down here. Boop. Wow, this is wild. Okay, I just have to get off over this initial shock. And then I'm going to read that other stuff about securitization and how it's illegal.